Good evening. Welcome to the Ashland Planning Board meeting of May 12th, 2016. Uh, we are in the basement of Town Hall tonight, uh, so we're being recorded uh, for rebroadcast on WACA, though unfortunately we are not live. I believe there's a uh, public discussion on the override upstairs right now. Uh, so I'm the vice chair, so I'll be uh, chairing the meeting uh, until Mike makes it here. Uh, we have a number of site plan reviews tonight. Um, and do we have any other, like, uh, quick business to take care of, Nat, before we start on any of these? Um, we may have minutes, but I would suggest that we jump on into site plan review if we could. Okay. Um, according to the agenda, the first one is 73 Hart. 73 is oh, a subdivision. Okay. So uh, we need 73 to all of a subdivision. So we need to wait till we get Moki. So zero Mungunko would be the first site plan. Is that the yes, right one to start with? Yes, sir. All right. So let's start with zero Mungunko. Uh, this is the uh, the um, uh, development where it's basically a big uh, building with a bunch of different garages for contractors. It's right on the corner of Mungunko and Cherry, uh, right next to the train tracks. It is. So, uh, I will ask the... Oh, did I? George, can I trouble you to speak to the microphone, please? Yeah. Thank you. My name is George Connors. I'm an engineer with Cornerstone. I'm also an attorney working with Mr. Orlando, who is the developer of this particular piece of property. He's acquired it, and we've had a hearing so far with this board. We've also had a hearing with the... Uh, Conservation Commission, both of them have been extended. Uh, tonight I don't have anything really substantive because there was some revisions to the plan made in the last couple of days. They involve addressing some of uh, PCS's comments, uh, but more importantly they, um, they'll be reflected as a change to this particular site from a couple of perspectives. Uh, initially we had a drainage system down in here with a detention basin in addition to infiltration for a lot of the parking lot runoff. The owner is asked if we could actually get more infiltration and eliminate that detention basin and get some additional parking area over in this area. And we can do that. Those calculations have been finished today and sent over to PCS. I don't expect that there's been any review, and we fully expect to extend this for a couple of weeks and be to conservation in the interim. Uh, one other issue is that there was some suggestion that there was flooding out on Cherry Street as a result of some long-duration storm several years ago when we were at design review, and a butter brought that in. Subsequently, I was requested to take a look at that by the planning board. What happens is there is a set of drainage basins along the street, and then the town has an easement coming across the back near the railroad, and the pipe is blocked, and there's no way to daylight that pipe, especially into this ditch, which is controlled by EPA. I think you can confirm that with your DPW. We've heard that story many times. Um, so there's really no way to address that off-site drainage flooding issue. It has nothing to do with us. Our entire site is taking care of its own water. Um, and even when the road floods, if it does flood, it doesn't affect our building. However, um, we have looked at the problem based on the assertions that it did flood. We note that that catch basin out in the street, just a few inches below the rim, has standing water. That water and a rainstorm will come up to the surface of the rim, and then after a short period of time, it'll begin to drop down. So there's some flow probably out of the joints of the pipe or at the end of the pipe somewhere um, into the ground. We have looked at the grading, and someplace down in this location, I'm sorry, this location near that ditch, we can put in what's called a chimney. We'll go down and find the pipe and simply put a manhole with a grate on the top there, so water can literally equilibrate from the street uh, and flow into the ditch. The grades there and the grades of the ditch allow for a drop of some few feet into it, but only about a half a foot between the low point in the street and where we could daylight that. It's not an elegant engineering solution, but again, it's not our problem. We think it may help you 
and we're willing to discuss that as an alternative as we go forward and after you get your engineering reviews. Um, that's basically it at this particular point in time. Subsequently, uh, we'll be back with um, this again after the review comes in and we address those comments. So I will answer any interim questions at this point. Uh, Preston? Any? I, I just want to call out that I believe our peer reviewer for this project is here, Phil Paradis um, from Professional Services Corporation. And um, you have the option of certainly asking him about the status of things on his end. Uh, that would be good to hear. If there's just uh, anything you, that uh, we need to pay attention to or be aware of. And, and please do speak to the microphone. Okay. Um, for the record, uh, my name is Philip Paradis. I'm a professional engineer with uh, Professional Services Corporation, or PSC, and uh, we reviewed this uh, a couple of times uh, for the, the for the board. And we have a letter that's dated April 22nd. And as Mr. Cornerstone indicated, uh, we received plans uh, and some calculations this late this afternoon. Uh, we have not had a chance to confirm that they've addressed. Um, or comments. Um, there are a number of issues um, related to drainage that we've just um, received for the first time calculations. So we, we need to go through those. We also need to review some of the comments related to uh, screening and and other issues that uh, uh, don't. The the landscape plan has not also been updated. So um, so those are generally. Um, the issues, like I said, um, they've done, I know they've, from what I've seen, they've, they've done some soil testing to determine seasonal high groundwater. It looks like they've, a few of the holes they ran into uh, refusal. So we need to see how that impacts the infiltration systems uh, as well. So. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Not from you. Not yet. Um, any comments from the public on on this matter? All right. Uh, seeing none, uh, should we continue this this point then? Yeah, we, we should continue. Um, and I guess the goal, of course, would be to complete um, peer review by the next meeting to give the planning board an opportunity for some closure on this. So that would be the tw Thursday the 26th? So I want to talk to you about the 26th because that is the night right after town meeting. Um, and so I don't know if you want to continue to hold the planning board meeting that night or if you wanted to wait until June. Um, we might also need to appoint um, in a joint session with the Board of Selectmen um, a new member of the planning board. That's also something that, that will need to get done. I don't know if it will get done by um, the second meeting in May or not. Um. But that person would have missed too many meetings to uh, continue on this anyway. Fair enough. So fair enough. Is that true? I, this is a site plan review. I, I believe. Three out of five. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think it would be Mike, me, and Max that would be the the voting members on this in that case. Yeah. I mean, it's it's up to you. I just th those were the outstanding issues. Yeah. Uh, if you think you'll be ready, I I think May twenty six makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and if for some reason you're not and we don't have other business, we can cancel that. I, you know, I don't want to hold you up any longer than necessary. Do you want to do 715? That sounds right. Okay. Thank you. I entertain a motion to continue this to 715 on May, Thursday, May 26th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes 4-0. Okay. All right. The next item, I believe, is another site plan review of um, this. Preston, let me just say that George is doing two of the items tonight. I don't know if you wanted to just... Which, which other item is he doing? The other item that George is doing is 7 Walcott. Is that right? I don't know if you wanted to just take care of that now or okay. how, how you wanted to proceed. Uh, might as well. Yeah. Let's okay. keep them together. Uh, 
Now, have we discussed this one before? This is this is new. Okay. Not not a planning oh, no, board. Yeah. Not not a planning. The variance sometimes. We have seven Walcott. It's a uh, contractor's landscaper's garage. We have uh, an order of conditions on this for the garage. We have met with the Zoning Board of Appeals last Tuesday night. That hearing was continued only to create a draft suggested findings. We had really no abutters at that particular meeting and there weren't very many issues. It requires both a variance, a dimensional variance, and a um, special permit. But at this board, we have site plan review. And the site plan deals with constructing this particular 40 by 80 garage on the site. There are several outbuildings that exist, pre-existing, <coughs> non-conforming. Can you hear me? Um, multiple principal uses. We have an industrial zone and a commercial highway zone. All these uses are allowed on the site. Multiple principal uses are allowed on the site. The issue before zoning is that we don't have the area necessary to support both of those uses. However, they're pre-existing non-conforming, so it's a technical uh, deficiency with respect to upland area we need 54,000 square feet of upland. We have about 50. So that's the dimensional issue. In terms of the site itself, it has a stream down below and the river zone, the 100 and the 200 foot. We have a wetland line, this solid orange line going around the site. We have a 100 year flood on the site and adjacent to the site. And then we have an area outside that, which is a 100 foot buffer. And as I said, all these structures exist. There's one small shed that's going to be removed. The site is generally lighted as it exists. We're going to put a couple of um, uh, gooseneck fixtures on the front of the building. That's really all we need. The building is going to be a front entrance with the paved area. As I indicated, we've been to conservation. There's a 25-foot no-touch adjacent to the buffer, uh, the wetland zone. We've got the order of conditions allowing this construction to take place and redoing of the parking lot area. We have a small detention basin in this area. Um, in terms of the surrounding site, there's literally nothing across the street except when you look uh, in the direction towards Framingham down a street or two is Greenhelge Road and there are houses and that. When this swampy area on the other side is devoid of leaves, you can see those houses. So they've elected to put in some western red cedars, which are an arborvitae but deer resistant, and that will help um, shield the building and the lighting from those neighbors in the wintertime. Um, there's an existing section of Walcott that comes down 130 feet. It has utilities in it. We're going to extend those into the building. And Walcott is going to remain as it is. You can see that 25-foot um, no-touch that conservation has, so there's no potential for that road really going through, and it's a huge um, deep swamp as it gets in the back. Um, zoning board had a, we were there about 40 minutes, I would think, and we went through all of the issues with this. It's fairly remote. There is a um, little veterinary shop here. There's a little bit of a house. And then there's an abandoned uh, nursery-type facility that hasn't been used in years. But generally surrounding it is that large wetland swamp. Um, and I think that this particular site is remote and has really no impact on abutters. And I'll respond to any questions and comments you may have. Any comments from the board? Uh, Nat, you want to start? George, how tall is the building? Oh, I didn't get to the building, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's going to be a metal building. Uh, the front of the building and some uh, windows in it, some pass doors on the side. It's about 20 feet tall. 
in the back. It's going to be just a little bit taller in the front for the slope of the roof. It's going to have a four, three or four foot concrete wall coming up so the building will sit on it and they're going to face the concrete with some sort of uh, stone fascia. Um, and in terms of the types of um, businesses that would be, that would call this home, what, what's the thought? Landscaping, um, maintenance type businesses? Yeah, K&D Landscaping is the owner of the property. Mm -hmm. They've operated there for many years, mm -hmm. and they're simply putting a modern structure up so the mechanics can work inside and the equipment in a little bit more uh, friendly atmosphere. Um, it's got a little office and a uh, facility in it. Mm -hmm. um, it'll have heat and light, and it's the building that they're going to operate out of now that their business is well established. And the equipment that's there, it's safe to assume, is the equipment that would be associated with the landscaping business, right? Yeah, right? it's the equipment that is already there. There's it's a bunch there. of pickup okay. trucks, there's a bunch of plows, and all those uh, mowers and things of that nature. Okay. Initial questions from the board? Okay. Uh, it looks like the, the three feet of concrete or so, I see it on two of the side renderings and not on the other two? Is that, does that go all the way around the building? It will when we're finished. We have a very difficult time getting these architects to show that concrete coming up four feet all the way around. A very difficult time. <laughs> I'm not too concerned as whether it's shown in the renderings or not, but uh, um, it'll be it'll be up four feet. Either and half um, th this is near uh, for people watching at home uh, who don't know exactly where this is. This is near uh, 126 um, off on the the right hand side as you're going north towards Framingham. Uh, walk. Cot Road, um, is that a private road or is that a town road? It's a town road. And it's mostly, a. it looks like it's mostly a paper road. It is almost all a paper road, as is Russell Road. Russell is over here. Um, the idea of extending that through the wetlands is just not going to happen, and the property behind it and on the left side, as you can see, is I, wetlands. George, can you define what a paper road is, please? A paper road is one that isn't accepted by the town and is typically owned to the middle by people on either side, but uh, neither one of them has the ability to foreclose the other's use of that road. So, quick question. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> so, essentially, this is a special permit process for the planning board? Right. No, site no. plan review. The CBA. Planning board, as a special permit granting authority application for special permit code town of Ashland, but we have a variance and a multiple principal uses on one site. And okay. we believe that the appropriate place, I think, is at the uh, zoning board. I'm just reading the application. That's why. Uh, it it so, gets confusing. Yeah. So. If, yeah. If, if they needed a, a special permit from the planning board because of our pending membership change, we would not open a special permit hearing tonight. Got it. That would not work. Um, so essentially, we're just looking at a site plan. Yeah. Yep. Plain and simple. Okay. Um, I'm guessing you probably have a lot of abutters on the street to the north. So th this is across the street from Ashland Ale House, correct? And then yeah, almost. Just, just yeah, to the north is the, the uh, car dealership there. Good works. Yes, there is. There's cars there. Yep. I'm familiar yep. with it. Okay. So it seems uh, relatively cut, it, cut and dry as far as that goes. I mean, it looks the way just from looking at a satellite view. It appears that's the way it's being used now. But I'm sure I'd love to hear from residents if they're here. We've got a crowd for some reason tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's not this. Oh, it's not this? Nice. Uh, is there, are there any residents who would like to talk on, about this, ask any questions? Uh, I don't see any. Something else. Um, that being the case, uh, do you expect to have uh, more progress and would you like to, uh, when would you like to discuss this next, I should say? We'd like not to discuss it next. We, we would, um, with, your, with your permission, we'd, we would like to do one peer review iteration. We usually do two. We'd like to do one peer review iteration between now and the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you find reasonable? Yeah. Uh, this, this does look pretty straightforward. Yep. Um, but, you know, uh, as far as the does it make sense there, you know, have you covered the, the policy type things? 
Um, it looks reasonable, but we do need the peer review because there are technical aspects with drainage and stuff such that we're responsible for, and we can't really speak to those tonight without a peer review. Um, so. so do you want to think about the 26th? Uh, is, 26? is that the same as the other one? Yes. Yep. Same time? Yeah, 7.15. Uh, so I would entertain a motion to continue this till 7.15 on Thursday, May 26th. So moved. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Max, you second that, right, man? Yeah. Max seconded. Vanessa made the motion. Okay. And that passed 4 0. Thank you. All right. Uh, now, what, which item do you suggest we take next? Well, we do know that um, Mr. Moki is on his way. Okay. But seeming, uh, since he's not here yet, um, just to keep things moving along, um, I would suggest that we hit 125 Union. Okay. Unless. Uh, or could we just quickly do the, the, is the covenant release a quick and easy one? Uh, the covenant release we're going to postpone until the 26th. Okay. Yeah, let's do 125 uh, Union Street then. <clears throat> Pretty, uh... Maybe they want it. Share with you? Yep. I don't know. Sure. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, this is the uh, re redevelopment of the Shell Station and uh, the new um, convenience store, Dunkin' Donuts, um, with that, for people who are keeping track at home. And I think your easel is collapsing. Good, good chair. <laughs> chair makes a pretty good easel. <laughs> and just, just so the audience knows, um, the reason why we can't do 73 Olive Street at this time is because we need four members who have, um, well, four members who will be here for the 26th or whatever. For the 26th. Um, so we do need Mike Moki to be here. Well, three. Well, a core of three, and then we can always add. Right. If yeah. the new one watches a DVD, the DVD, they'll be fine. Right. Nice. You won the election. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Study up. Marathon. It's called the Hazy Watch Process. Hazy <laughs> Process. Uh, yes, proceed. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, my name is Tony Fructal. I'm with AUB Engineering. We're the, uh, the site engineer for the project. Uh, with me is Angelo Ruel. Angelo is a vice president of operations and owner of the site uh, operator of the, the convenience store. Um, we were here back in April. I was not here. Another member of our company, Al McCallie, was here, presented this plan. Um, I was hoping to take two minutes to review, I think, what he had presented to you, the fact that um, the existing store, uh, it's about 2,500 square feet, contains a car wash. It had four pump islands out front. Um, oriented opposite of what we're proposing here. Um, only four parking spaces, and the car wash had a, a drive-through lane that, that looped around the back here. Um, we're proposing uh, a convenience store of uh, 2,900 square feet. Um, it will have a co-brand area in it, probably, oh. yeah, because that's what's there now, probably 400 square feet. Um, Pump Islands, uh, you can see the canopy. Uh, instead of being square, it'll be elongated. Um, Pump Islands will be, uh, oriented this way um, makes it a little bit easier on the site for in and out. Um, the the project includes the replacement of the existing underground storage tanks. They're located in this corner. The tanks will be replaced. Uh, the three tanks will be replaced with two tanks. Um, the storage will be very close to what's there now. Uh, the new tanks, uh, fiberglass, double wall, kind of top of the line, everything you have to do for um, underground storage per uh, DEP. Um, we have 11 parking spaces shown. Uh, there's 10 across the front. Uh, I think what's out there now, you have to park on the side or people make spaces along this edge and they find the store. They'll, be, uh, they'll now be right in front going in and out. Um, th there is a drive through lane shown for the Dunkin' Donuts. Um, that drive through lane does meet all the queuing requirements for the town as far as how many cars are at the menu board, how many, you know, the car at the, at the window, the cars between, um, it, it actually exceeds that by a couple cars. 
right from the uh, the drive-through lane. So um, they can have 12 cars there without even being on the site, far less you know spilling onto the street. Um, some of the upgrades to the site, as far as environmentally, I think the biggest thing is, is stormwater management. Uh, there's very little out there right now. Um, the, the proposed stormwater management includes a basin in the above ground basin in the back, and then there's a, a couple of um, subsurface uh, systems proposed in the front. We've done some soil testing out there, and uh, the systems have been designed based on those uh, based on those uh, res the results of that testing. Utility connections will all be the same as what's out there now. Water comes off of Union Street. I think a gas and sanitary come off of Homer Avenue. Um, and we have been to the zoning board once. Uh, there was a variance request for some signage and a special permit request that's required for the drive-through use and for the setbacks um, on the site. That zoning board hearing was continued. Um, I think they're waiting for some input from this board maybe, um, or just to find out a little bit further along where this goes. Um, we recently resubmitted a comment letter, a response to a comment letter from the peer review. Um, we have not heard a response from that yet. So, um, Angelo, do you have anything you need to add this time? Um, we were hoping to take comments from the board. If anybody has anything? Where do we need to go? What? Anything else we need to see or discuss? Any comments from the board? Nat, do you want to start as planning yeah, director? Um, yeah, this might have come up last time. Um, my apologies for not being present. Um, but I'm just wondering, maybe even for review purposes, the current structure that's there, that will be taken down. Completely. Completely, right? So all of this is brand new. It's all brand new. Whole okay. site. Okay. Okay. All right. so I think the only thing that's not coming down is there is a fence along the rear of the property and along this side of the property. I know the entire rear and like a portion of this side of the fence is remaining. I think it's in pretty good shape. And then this part of the fence, six foot high stockade fence will be replaced. So you'll have, you'll have tenants in the facility, right? Yes. Okay, which tenants? Hello, I'm Angelo Rule, uh, Vice President of Operations, Cold Deer Enterprise. We do have an existing tenant there right now. Mm -hmm. There's an existing Dunkin' Donuts operator. They are going to continue to operate their facility. Okay. And um, with the term, with, with in terms of the convenience store aspect of it, who is it? Dunkin' Donuts that currently runs that, or how no? How does that family work? operation. We're out of Rhode Island. This would be our 17th Seasons Corner Market location. Mm -hmm. Family-run business. Um, we have a, a staff of uh, managers, general managers. We will staff it. We will run it. We're, we're in the day-to-day -day operations of the facility. So we don't lease it out to a third party. We will run it ourselves. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? Uh, uh, one thing I'm wondering, how long do you... Th so you're obviously going to have to close the, the station that you have now while you do all this work. About how long from when you close to when you reopen do you expect? If everything goes well, we can usually do this in about 90 days. The problem that we usually run across is we're fairly new owners. I believe we took this over from Michelle around seven or eight years ago. The problem that always may happen is contamination. And one thing we do do, any contamination while the excavation is done will be removed, trucked off, and uh, clean soil we brought back in. So it all depends what the history is. I think we did a few soil samplings. It looks pretty clean, but that was an existing, I believe, years ago in the 60s and 70s. I believe that was probably a repair shop. So who knows what was done way back then as far as lifts in the ground. So once we dig it up, um, there will be a professional site person from the state who monitors all the soil uh, removal, and they'll do the testing, and basically if there are any Dirty, uh, any dirty dirt, it comes out, new soil can go back in. That could take a, a month or maybe a, or more. We don't know until we start actually digging. Okay. Are there any comments from the public on this? Yeah. I'm, I I'm sorry, I need to yeah. come to the microphone so people can hear you on the camera who are watching at home. Uh, yeah, state your name for the record. 
Uh, my name is Jim Grassberger. I own the piece of property that abuts the four family that abuts uh, abuts the project. And I, I was just kind of concerned about the traffic flow, and um, you know this. What happens here is this this kind of gets backed up, and people are crossing over a double line in order to get into the in, into the um, the gas station here. And um, I was just wondering about how that's going to be handled, or if this is a if this is going to be a one way or a two way entrance. I, I believe it's uh, a two way entrance. So that's going to be a two way entrance. Yeah. Okay. I, and I believe. Um, <laughs> I, I may be mistaken, but my understanding is it, it is legal to make a left turn into there. Okay. Um, unless unless a sign is put up um, to the uh, otherwise. So it's legal just to cross over the, the double. Yeah, the double not for passing line, somebody, but for making a left turn. Got yes. It. Got it. Okay. Um, and again, this is the first time I've kind of seen it, except on, on outside. We talked a little bit in the hall. Um, I am happy. I, there's. Um, vacuum cleaners that are here they're going thank you i appreciate that <laughs> and uh, uh other than that again I, i'm just uh, you know there's a dunkin donuts down the street drive through you know, it's um i'm just a little concerned about the the amount of traffic going through the yeah the uh the issue with uh whether or not a drive through is allowed i yeah. believe that's a special permit in front of the zba okay uh so that's not our decision okay uh, so what we're going to do is uh, uh, consider this, assuming they are allowed to have a drive-through and come up with the best plan we can for that. Right. And then if for some reason the ZBA says no, then we would uh, have to revisit because uh, they're, they're obviously going to have a completely different plan if that's the case. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. If, if I may add... Uh, I know his, uh, his interest in the traffic. The last couple of meetings that we had here, um, we'd be the first to admit it's a mess. And that's one of the reasons we want to do this project. Uh, there is uh, no, there's no room to, to move cars or of going all which ways. There's no place to park. We're going to have 10 or 11 spots in front of the store. Uh, what's happening now is people will pull up to the pumps. They walk inside the Dunkin' Donuts. They're on the, on the pumps. They're coming through the side. They're pulling out. I mean, it's, it's a mess. And this will, I, this will fix the problem. Uh, so at this point, I, I believe we're waiting on uh, response from peer peer review. Um, are there any other major issues we should discuss tonight, or are we ready to uh, move forward on this? So we've had one iteration of peer review. Okay. And so they just got the material for the second, right? Yeah, that was just submitted. Okay. okay. We'll go to the peer review. Uh, so we should continue this at this point. Um, I, I don't think anybody on the planning board has any major changes they're looking to see at this point. Um, so if you want just a general sense of where we are uh, to tell the ZBA, I think that would be fair. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, and um, when should we continue this to? When would, when would work well for your schedule? Our next regular meeting is May 26th. I think we'd like to go May 26th. Yes. That's um, so should we do... Do you want to do like seven, seven fifteen for everything like the concom does, or do you want to do? Well, let's spread them out a little let's bit. Let's out. say seven forty five. Seven forty five. So we're gonna, we'll, we should need at least. Uh, let's say seven thirty, okay. just in case something completely changes on the other items. May twenty six, seven thirty. Yeah. Okay. We'll probably actually start a little later, but. Um, That's fine. No. So. Yeah. And we expect the, yeah that second round to be done. I mean, uh, we had the comments. <coughs> there wasn't anything earth shattering in the comments I don't think you know that we didn't look at anything and say what are we going to do there so we're confident that we can get that resolved and for the next meeting so okay yeah great okay yes um, I'll entertain a motion to continue this till May 26th at 730 so moved. second all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed uh, that passes 4-0 okay great. Thank, great. You. thank you thank you all right um, do you want to dig into minutes in the meantime? Yeah. Uh, what was the deal with the 73 Hardwick covenant release? The deal was the applicant never filled out the covenant release form. Okay. 
happens here. So that's that's essentially the, the formal application. Is this one of those where it was released previously and then the paperwork wasn't filed, so it's a re-release, or is this a new release? Or is this something I think that's different? I think that's kind of hazy. We're, we're, the history is a little hazy. So, so I'm thinking that we need to consider this a new release. Okay, but it's a fairly old... Yes. Uh, completely completed project Correct. as far as... Okay. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, so the only other item is 73 Olive Street, uh, which I suspect is what a number of people are here to uh, hear about tonight. Uh, I can understand that. Um, it's a definitive subdivision public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, if Mike Moki is on his way, it would be nice to wait for him if we can. So we can do the minutes now. Let's do the minutes now. Okay. So that, Karen, what are we, number... Hopefully in everyone's tab. Number, number seven, number seven. April 28, number seven. Okay. Is it on the time? Did he give you a time? What did he say? No, he just walked yes. in the door and he said, I think it's your office on the bus. Okay. Got it. I just, text, just texted him, see if we get him. Hmm? I just texted him. Uh, just looking at this, with the uh, discussions we've had on the, the warrant articles where we recommended some changes, um, I assume those weren't, the changes weren't printed in the warrant. So and we're going to be uh, doing that on the floor. So the question, so it's a very good question. And so um, town council was actually able to incorporate your requested changes into the initial motions. Okay. So the changes are incorporated, the language of the changes is incorporated into the motions. Okay. Uh, the one thing that... With would, the exception of one thing. Which yeah. would be the rendering change, is that correct? So the rendering, okay. Um, the, the rendering change is also incorporated into the motion. Oh, okay, so is that actually printed in the, is the new rendering also printed there in the... In the it, booklets, or is it only going to be in a presentation that you're doing? So it's going to be in a presentation, and it's also going to be in a handbook that's an additional piece of material that the town is making for town meeting. Okay. Good. In addition to that, um, there were a couple of footnotes um, that weren't on the initial rendering that were in the table, about three of them. So those are also going to be in the handbook, and I'm going to bring that up as well. Okay. We did bring it up, so yeah. I guess they say we didn't. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Right. And because these minutes uh, include uh, town meeting article warrants, uh, these minutes need to be approved uh, to be submitted along with the town meeting minutes to the Attorney General. Is that uh, so? I believe. Oh. I, be I believe these have to be approved to show that we can completed the hearing because we're required to have that hearing. I may be mistaken, but I've heard that. Oh, okay. Um, so it would be good to get these approved tonight if, um, if we can. Okay. Um, do you have any, any comments on the minutes? Good to me. I motion, I make a motion. Yes. Yeah. I move to approve the minutes of April 28th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? That passes 4-0. So, I'm sorry, who seconded it? Max. Max. Okay. You are the second man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number two. All right. And that covers minutes. Do we have any so, other minutes or bills? So, so we don't, but um, we do have um, Jim McLaughlin here from the Village of the Americas. And um, I did ask him to come tonight with regard to um, an item that's actually going to be on the agenda uh, at the next meeting. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust will be here to look for an update on affordable housing units. 
Um, so my hope is that Jim might also be able to return to the next one. But perhaps, Jim, you could give us a briefing of where we stand in that process right now. Sure. Yes, please. please. That'd be great. Uh, Jim McLaughlin from uh, Benchmark Engineering, representing the uh, Village of the Americas. And uh, I have a couple of uh, plans of the uh, overall development with the um, affordable units designated. So maybe if I could just spread those out. So the green ones on here are the affordables? Correct. And, and the, <laughs> the green ones are the affordable ones that are complete. And then um, in the phase seven area, they're uh, like a pink or salmon colored. Uh, and those are proposed. Uh, so to date, um, we have uh, built uh, 20, uh, 24. Uh, 24 affordables, and uh, those are the ones that are in the green. Uh, they've all been sold with the exception of one, which we added um, after the, the lottery was already uh, wrapped up. And um, Nat had asked that we add an additional unit in, in the, the last phase, phase six, which we did. But uh, before we can sell that, we need to get the approval of uh, the state uh, DHCD um, because it wasn't in the lottery. They still have the the way that um, the affordable units work uh, has changed since when we started the project. Now we're required to um, hire an independent um, lottery agent, which is also uh, acts as a real estate broker. The the first um, half of the project, we had done it internally here uh, with with the, our personnel as well as town personnel and run it. Uh, but now the, the state regulations have changed and they require an independent uh, lottery agent. So we uh, had hired um, MCO uh, Maureen uh, O'Hagan to, uh, and she's one of the, the approved uh, lottery agents. And she ran the lottery for the, the last phase, which was uh, an eight unit lottery. And uh, all those all those have been um, sold, and as I mentioned, um, we added a, a ninth one. And that one, we're still waiting to get the approval from uh, DHCD to be able to sell that. She still has uh, a waiting list of people from the, the original lottery that uh, um, were qualified at the time, but uh, we have to get the approval from the state before we can sell that last unit. Um, the next group will be uh, the final uh, final eight units, uh, and we wouldn't start the lottery until we have two or three of those under construction because what happens um, if, if you hold the lottery and uh, the units aren't available for, say, a two-year time frame, uh, the people that qualify, by the time the, the units are available, a lot of them don't qualify or they've gone on and Made other uh, made other arrangements. They can't st stay around for for a couple of years. So um, what what makes sense is to uh, hold that lottery about halfway through when we have uh, three or four of those units that are that are ready or about to be ready, and uh, then develop the the list of uh, potential purchases based on that. Okay. Any comments from the board? Uh, Nat, do you have anything else, Dad? Just that, again, the Affordable Housing Trust will come on the 26th. Um, Jim, do you think that you might be able to make it then? Sure. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. And have you been, uh, have you or someone been out there um, just checking on how the development's been going? So um, here's where we are. Um, we have had inspectional, engineering, exp inspectional engineers from GCG out there since they began construction. But, as you know, money was allotted to get a clerk of the works. In order to do that, um, I needed to, um, well, we needed to do an RFP, or an RFQ, rather. Um, we got qualifications, and so um, we've, we've chosen one. 
we've made that decision, and they're going to start within a couple of days. To okay. really, to really, so we have the inspectional engineering, but now you know this is going to add another layer. Okay. That's where we are. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, we should move on then. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Good night. Did, right. did you want to touch on the comprehensive plan a little bit, or did you want to wait until later? Um, I don't have much to say on the comprehensive plan. Do you? My update is as follows. Um, I'm still looking into it, um, but my understanding is that there are very specific requirements for the initial... Oh, is that Mike? Yeah. Oh. Just ignore him. Oh, all right. My understanding is that there are very specific requirements for the initial plan, but there's leeway in terms of how a plan can be updated. The language in Mass General Law says, and I think the word perfect is used. I probably, I should have brought it. In fact, maybe I'll just look it up and I can tell the board. But I think it gives a degree of flexibility in terms of how you want an update to be, what you want it to consist of. We can talk about it. Okay. We don't have to come to a conclusion tonight. Okay. Uh, with that, um, uh, Mike, I'm glad you're able to make it. Uh, and, I apologize for being late. Uh, I believe I will turn the meeting over to you. We have uh, completed all of the items that we have for tonight other than uh, 73 Olive Street. All right. And uh, we'll open up 73 Olive Street. Let's definitive, open up this sucker. Definitive subdivision <laughs> public hearing. Uh, Nat, do you have any announcements on 73 Olive Street? Well, um, I have a couple. Um, the first is that um, there are two types of applications for a subdivision. The first is a preliminary application, and the second is a definitive application. The purpose of submitting a preliminary application, which is what the applicant did, is to get an understanding of what the issues are the types of issues that are going to come up and the types of issues that they'll face. It's not to say, you can now go build this. That's not the purpose of the preliminary application. They've received a preliminary application from the planning board. This is a definitive application where the planning board's going to look at chapter 344, which are the subdivision rules and regulations, and they are going to see whether the plan that's provided here either abides by those regulations or doesn't. That's really the function of this process. That's it. All right, thank you. Let's turn over to the applicant. Sure. Good evening, my name's uh, Jason Lavoie. I work for the, the Gilson Company. Uh, we're doing the engineering uh, and surveying for the, for the project at 73 Olive Street. What I'd like to do is uh, basically descri describe the existing conditions uh, for the project, and then I'll, I'll go out to the, uh, the, the proposed uh, site development. So here we are at Olive Street. And actually, I'll go real quick to the Locust. So you have Olive Street. You have Maury Drive and Cherry Lane, and this is uh, going up to Maine over there. And then we have um, basically the old uh, railroad through there. Um, then we have the proposed road along this section of, of off Olive Street with the existing house being lot one and then three new, three new lots. The existing project, as I had mentioned, here's the existing house. Uh, this was an A&R lot that was, that was taken out, I believe it was last year. We have um, basically just over 5.34 acres. Um, we also last year... Uh, went in front of the Conservation Commission, National Conservation Commission, to get a, an ORAD uh, for the wetlands that were on the project site. The uh, wetlands were delineated by David Burke. Um, they were uh, witnessed by the uh, Conservation Commission. There were some slight adjustments. And what we're showing on the plan right now is the approved uh, wetland delineation. So we have two wetlands in the, in the back of the property. Uh, they're denoted by this green line here and that green line there. Here's the 25-foot notice urban in red, and then the 100-foot buffers are shown in yellow. The existing house is a double-barrel driveway with a little turnaround for a side-low garage. Um, the existing house is on town sewer. Um, it's, a, it's a very large uh, 
difference in elevation as you look on the project site. Um, up in the highest portion of the property, it's at elevation 318. And as we go down to the lowest portion of the property, it's, it's 283. So it's a, a very large gradient in the actual elevations for the, across the property. So this is the proposal, um, basically a roadway uh, allowing to get frontage for three additional lots and then the one existing lot that will have frontage off the roadway as well. Um, uh, two of the lots are just over the 30,000 square feet, uh, which are the minimum requirements. Um, and the two rear lots are 74,000 and 60,000. Um, part of that is because of the, the wetlands. We want to make sure they had oversized lots to accommodate um, for the uh, wetland regulations. Um, they all pass the Rule 22 requirements. Um, there is an existing, as we said, as per some of the regulations, we, uh, we are showing some of the existing historic walls on the property. The, uh, the, how, the project itself will require um, some drainage easements uh, for the proposed uh, detention basin and the two uh, underground recharge basins. Here's the uh, site grading plan. So what we have is roadway coming up to the high point and then traveling back down because as we as I mentioned here's the section of the, of the property that's the high point of the of the highest point of the property. So coming up through here for utilities we have two catch basins, four catch and an additional two catch basins here. So four catch basins on the downgrading side between the high point and the, and Olive Street itself. As we go travel down towards the cul-de-sac. We have uh, three additional catch basins to go towards the rear recharge basin. Um, the water that comes from the abutter on the left side, uh, which is uh, 85 uh, um, Olive Street, we have a small detention basin here, which will capture some of that water, allow it to pond up, go through a culvert, and then travel down to the recharge basin. This road itself is intended to be a private road. Um, basically, a uh, homeowner's trust will be in charge, a homeowner's association will be in charge of the road. Um, so basically, that's so some of the waiver requests that we have tonight have to do with uh, reductions in some of the construction. Um, reduction in pavement width uh, from uh, uh, 26 feet to 20 feet. Um, the uh, reduction in having a sidewalk that goes all the way around the, the roadway. We have sidewalk on just one side of the roadway. Um, so most of it has to do uh, guardrails, not having to do guardrail, not put light, not putting street lights, that kind of stuff on the, on the project site. Um, so all of it has to do because we're trying to keep this as more like a uh, a residential. It's a larger than a driveway, but we want, we don't want to bring a lot of attention to it. And with with it being a private road, homeowners trust, we also don't want to put a, a lot of costs into it that we don't think is 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 necessary. So those are some of the waivers that we'll have to discuss um, with the planning board. We we believe that we're looking at um, right now these three proposed homes are uh, we're assuming four bedroom homes will be the would be on the project site. With the high point on the, on the property, uh, we basically can get gravity from two of the houses for the sewer, which runs up through the, through the center of the road. Uh, but these two here, if we were, the, we're, we're talking about probably doing a force main up to the, the high point and then bringing that down gravity with the other two houses. Um, we did have a discussion with the, um, the sewer department, uh, water department. So when we do the homeowners association, who is going to be in charge of maintenance of the roadway, uh, so basically plowing. Um, maintaining the road, maintaining the drainage. Um, we will have to give easements to the town sewer and water department and also the, eventually for the electrical company as well to have access to the mains that will be in the road. So they'll, con they'll actually maintain the mains inside the road, but all the individual services would be maintained by the homeowners. Um, the, uh, we, tried, we, uh, we ended up putting the pump vault for the two um, houses in the rear in the center of the, of the cul-de-sac with a, with a generator backup. The, um, the water does have a, we have a hydrant at the end and the hydrant at the beginning, existing hydrant at the beginning, which we're going to, basically based on the new grading, we're going to have to remove and replace in kind. So same, it'll stay in the same location, but we have to remove it temporarily to, to cut the grades over there. And then uh, it's basically the pavement as we tie into the existing pavement. Um, and then we'll replace it in the same location. The, um, the one in the rear, we have it just at the end, just, the, just prior or just after the, uh, the last private utility, so they can use that to flush the water line. Um, so then this way there's no debris or anything inside the water main itself. 
the um, is the water looped? No, it is not. We just have we have a dead end. So what we do is about five feet after the, the, the last service, private service, we have the hydrant. So the water department can go down in that section and then, uh, and then flush the, the line so that in this way there no debris will be in the water. I know the DPW is currently in the process of uh, working on looping the lines that are not looped. Right. Because they, they don't like having to use water to flush lines. Right, right. Um, so that I, I'm... Where, where does DPW stand on that yeah. item? So that was at the last time we, we discussed was at the design review, and they they had mentioned that, that their only concern you, was you mean you mean tech review? Tech review, sorry. And, and was this this was with Roy, right? Yes. Roy Correa. Yeah. So what did he have to say? He said that uh, that the only issue they had was that sometimes the homeowners have issues when there's a basically there might be a water conservation going on and they have to flush the line, so then they'll turn the hydrant on and then neighbors will get upset because there's a water conservation on. Can, can you can you um, touch base with Roy? Yes. And have him produce um, a letter or an email to the effect of where he stands on this? Sure. Thank yeah. you. No problem at all. Okay. And then, yeah, if, there, if, there is, if that is a point that the town wants to push, like we could run the loop and bring it back. Um, it didn't seem like when we were doing the tech review that that, that was something that there was, it didn't seem out of the norm of what we were proposing. It, it, it is something the town has had a lot of concern about. Okay. Um, and, and I do know, yes, a lot of people have been upset seeing various hydrants open when we're having watering restrictions. Right. Um, and I know in some cases because there's older piping materials, so there's concern about asbestos if the water st stands, um, which uh, wouldn't be the case on, on new pipes. But right. um, I, I wouldn't want to create a situation where uh, you're having to leave a hydrant open. Right, okay. So. The, um, and that's actually, there was another point when I was so coming, staying on the water line. The, um, as with some of the neighbors here, uh, one thing we should bring up is that uh, Olive Street actually only has two water gates. Um, they're on either end of the road. So there's one way up there and there's one way down there. So eventually when we tap Olive Street, uh, we're going to actually be put doing a triple gate valve. Um, but when we tap it, they're going to have to, they can only, they're going to have to shut off the, the water for, the, for that section of, the, of Olive Street. So it's basically a large portion of the house is going to be shut down while we're doing the work. Um, so they're, they're, it's, it'll be good for the actual area for when we actually do that tap, because then they, they don't have to shut down the entire water for Olive Street every single time they ever do work on Olive Street. How so long I, would that take? So that it'll, it'll take a, a day to tap it. Okay. So, but they want, you know, we have, to did, we have to give notice to the abutters and that kind of stuff. Usually they have to, they had, they had give me a process of what we have to do to, to notify the abutters. But all in all, when it's all said and done, now we'll be at the stop. So now you can actually, you only have to shut off like half of Olive Street like next time they have to do any work on Olive Street's road, which will be a good thing. What's the length of the cul de sac? The cul de sac is. Actually, let me go ahead. It's 485? 485. Okay. All right. Um, can I just ask you a couple questions about sure. the houses, please? Sure. Okay. How tall will they be? Um, oh, Right now, we haven't designed them yet. Mm -hmm. um, we're believe, we believe that they're probably going to be two stories. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, maybe maybe 30 feet from grade. I mean, they're going to conform to zoning. Yep. Um, looking at, four, like I said, four-bedroom houses, a typical build-out for that. H how many square feet do you think? Uh, so you're probably thinking like 2,500 square feet, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, okay, that's, a, that's enough. So one of the big concerns... When we were doing the preliminary, right. site distance. So we, I know we had, had gotten the, the peer review for the for traffic, and we had gotten the peer review for site distance. And so the posted speed limit for Olive Street is uh, 25 miles an hour. But the peer review had requested that we do our design work for 30 miles an hour because that's they'd done a, a quick spot study on traffic in that area, and they said that it was the average speed was just below 30 miles an hour. So um, taking the actual standards for uh, 30 miles an hour for stopping site distance, which is 200 feet, and intersecting site distance, which is 335 feet, um, we're showing in green here uh, the two site distances. So from our intersection here. To that point there is our intersecting site distance, which is uh, 501.8 feet. So we're well over that required intersection site distance. 
Coming back the other way, to, uh, towards the south side of Olive Street, we're showing exactly 330, uh, exactly 335. Now, now, when you say required intersection site Correct. distance, can you go in, uh, can you explain about the requirement? Sure, sure. So, what, what is this requirement? So, what happens is it's a, it's basically turning movements. So, ASHO comes out with the standards of at a certain mile per hour. What, what is safe for a driver to be coming from our, our road to drive onto Olive Street? Who, who comes out with that? Ashto. And, and what is that? So Ashto is, the, uh, is the, the traffic study. It's basically the traffic standard. Um, it's, it's set up by... It's, uh, it's, it's, the, fe it's the federal yeah. standard for traffic Correct. regulations, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so um, what I did is I went and got the uh, speed limits from the town uh, that was 25 miles an hour. So we originally were setting it up for that, but peer review asked for the, the 30 miles an hour. So that's how we, did, that's how we checked everything against. And so... Um, we had done that for the intersecting site distance and the stopping site distance. So the stopping site distance is basically people traveling on Olive Street going towards the cul-de-sac and say an object comes out, a ball, a child, or anything like that. They have to have a certain amount of site distance uh, while they're driving on Olive Street to be able to stop so they don't hit that object that comes out of Olive Street. So that, that distance is 200 feet for stopping site distance, and the intersecting site distance is 335 feet. So for both north and south, we actually have the intersecting site distance, and same for the stopping site distance. Um, south, we have just under 280 feet, and north, we have almost 400 feet. So we have, we have well over what's the requirements for the 30 miles an hour, uh, which is above what's actually posted for the, for the speed limit. Um, yep. If I may, um, so uh, you're, speci you're, saying, you're taking this from, okay, at this speed, this, these are the distances we need, and then these are the distances we have. Uh, what I think would be much more interesting is to say, okay, with the distances we have, what is the maximum speed that we fit the regulations with? Yeah, we could, we could do that. Th yep. That would be, <clears throat> yeah. because cause then, it, then it, it puts a lot more context as to <laughs> how fast people really are driving versus what you're building for and, and just gives a much right. better perspective. Yeah, and I, we, are, we are, as I mentioned, the, the 30 was based on the peer review during the prelim that actually they said it was based on their study of the traffic on Olive Street. So that's why we originally did 30 miles an hour. How many feet away from Maury Drive are you? We are... Center line to center line, it's 231 feet. Just, regard, just with regard to that speed, I'm, I'm just afraid, you know, I think, unfortunately, the case may be that 30 miles an hour, some folks go faster than 30 miles an hour on that, on that street. Some folks go pretty fast. Yep. And um, for better or worse, I think we need to think about some of those higher speeds. Okay. Yeah. Because people really well, go fast. Well, that, I, that was actually my next point on that, because yeah. the... It, the traffic engineer said the average speed was just under 30. Right. right. But what we what we designed for is not the average speed. We designed for the 80th percentile. So that puts it over 30. And I don't know what number that puts it at, but it's... Yeah, I was just and, going and off and the what they had recommended. The instinctive feeling from the residents is that a lot of people drive faster than 30. So, so that's why we need to go back and say... What's the highest speed that your site distances meet the standard for? And, and then we can say where we are with that number. Okay. My concern on the site, site um, distance that you've got on there sure. is that it doesn't account for elevation change. I think you've got, that'd be nice if you were looking at a bird's eye view and dropping a straight line. I don't think the, the street I've driven by a ton of times in... <clears throat> There's a decent elevation change there too, so it doesn't. I don't think. I mean, I wish you guys can probably prove this out there. That's the profile of it. And where's the so the opening in the middle? Yep. So you have so this is a car sitting that we have located here. Mm -hmm. And these are the car's eyes on either side of the road. And these, this is the elevation change now off street. And that's the um, the green line is the distance that you're showing on. Correct. And is that taking into account to trees, vegetation? So what we have, there are there are a few trees, and we actually have them on the plans. And no one's seen these because we just finished it up. The peer review hasn't seen these. Yeah, so we haven't finish. submitted anything. Um, we just finished these up today. Um, there are there are five trees in the right of way um, that we would have to take down uh, for to get the site distance that we're showing. 
the, uh, the trees, uh, with the exception, is one 12 inch, everything else is a 2 inch and a 1 inch. Is Solid Street a scenic road? Yes, yes it is. Well, well that is the, are those trees within the right of way? Correct. And uh, what what, cal uh, 12, what caliper are they? So that's it. So there's there's one that's 12 inch. Yep. And the others are one inch and two inch. Process. Okay. Um, is it 16 or eight. All right. Eight. Eight. Uh, any any stone walls in the right of way? There are, but nothing that affects us. There's a there's a stone wall across the street. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But but not. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. So we'll have to we'll have to do a scenic road permit. Okay. At sure. some point mm -hmm. in the process. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to keep going and then we'll do comments after? Or we want yeah, to keep going. I'd like to finish here on the presentation. Sure. Yep. Sorry for my jumping in. Is no, no, if, if you have something yep. that pertains to what he's talking about. And now so he's going back to it later. <laughs> and then we have, um, for coming onto our road, um, these are the sight lines that we have, which we have taken down. And this was actually mentioned. Um, in the preliminary as well that the, uh, the traffic review engineer had talked about uh, having to take down some additional trees along this edge to get our view down into the, into the cul-de-sac. So, um, and these, these views here, which I actually have another pro profile I can show you, um, our stop and site distances are uh, vary from coming up the road from uh, 171 feet coming up and 197 going down, and then this direction here coming down the hill, we're in the ballpark of about 280 feet. Um, it's recommended that we be about, I think it's uh, 155 feet on those. So I, I can go the other way. I can, I'll figure out what that number is backwards. Um, but it's, the, so we're above the recommendation. Um, the profile for that. This? So this is the view of traveling down to the, Height of the uh, driver's eyes, looking down to an object that's six inches high at the bottom, and then coming up from the cul-de-sac, looking at an object that's six inches high up near the, the top of the hill, and then the other one. Yikes. Going from Olive Street up, here's the height going over the hill, which is that gets us to the that view right there, and then going down towards the cul-de-sac to the end of the road. Thank you. Can I have a peer reviewer present? Yeah, certainly. Uh, we got the peer reviewer here. Please. For the record, uh, my name is Phil Paradis with the Professional Services Corporation, or PSC. Uh, we've been asked to uh, review this on behalf of the, you folks. Um, we, the, the, obviously, there's a small subdivision. Um, there are a number of waivers that were requested. Uh, some are in line with low-impact development techniques, like minimizing widths of pavements, reducing the, 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 the two sidewalks to one. Um, so I think those are those are um, obviously your 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 choice, but th they are in line with uh, low, low impact development. The uh, we would recommend, even though if it's going to be developed as a private road, that it be constructed within uh, the town standards. For instance, so it, any time down the down the road, uh, down the road <laughs> in the future. Um, <laughs> That the the uh, the town could accept it uh, if if it's uh, so we would recommend that that means you know all, the, all certainly all the water and sewer and uh, drainage um, systems um, so we don't recommend that they provide less than the minimum diameter pipes for drainage. May, may I interject for just a second? Um, if I could just have the applicant get in touch with the DPW in terms of the. Um, the required um, road depth. Sure. Um, I think they just use current mass dot standards, but yeah. if you could just confirm that with them, that sure. would be great. Thanks. Okay. There, you do have a, uh, a standard uh, typical we, section. We just don't have a picture of it, though. Like I know you would ask for it. We just don't. I, yeah. Okay. I can't locate. Yeah, actually, I think the town standards are different from mass dot standards, 
but I think we'll accept MassDOT as long as DPW says it's okay, which I think they usually do. Okay. Um, having said that, there are a number of uh, design issues that we would we need to uh, update our standards. recommend that the, the board consider. First of all, I think, I think in general, I think a waiver request requires some additional narrative in terms of what benefit the town would get from, from, from the waiver they're requesting. So we would, we would request that, that, that some narrative be discussed for each of the waiver requests, uh, just as a, a, a due course. Um, again, the private road issue. Uh, we were not not aware that the, uh, the project uh, has, has an LRAD, uh, so obviously S1 is, is off the table. Uh, there are a number of uh, technical issues. One is that the profile, you got to be careful when you draw the profile. I know you did. Can I, can I yeah. use it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so is this the profile of the road? Yes. Center line of the road? If you want to use the ones with the utilities. No, no, no. Yeah. This is fine. This is yeah. fine. So, so and, and, and just so you, you need to maintain the sight distance. Like if the, the car is driving and is in this low area, they've got to be able to see that same safe sight distance. So I think the, the vertical curves have to be fit on there so you do, you do maintain that, okay. that sight distance. Um, and the, and the, your, your, your profile should show the drainage facilities and the water system as well as the sewer. Yeah, we do have those. I don't know if you worry about that. No, I, I, yeah. it's not necessary now. Um, you're, you're uh, creating a, a, a an unbuildable parcel. Um, didn't know what how that's going to be handled in the future. So yes, I don't know if you want to answer that. Yes, I do. So, do you check that paper. so the uh, the parcel. Is this section of land right here? It's going to be deeded to uh, deeded with lot one, so they're going to maintain it. Um, the homeowners association will uh, be in charge of taking care because that's why there's an easement here for the drainage, but the parcel itself will be maintained by by lot one. That sucks. Okay. It'll be owned by. Owned, yes. There we go. It's going to be yes. deeded to them. Yes. It'll that's be that's some more honest. <laughs> <laughs> it will be maintaining that. Um. So. The, yes, uh, design standards, site distance, you know, address those. Um, wave um, easements are, are required to be a minimum of 30 feet. Uh, so, um, so the the uh, storm in general, the stormwater management system has to be uh, up updated. To include a, a total build out. Typically, subdivisions are uh, the, the stormwater management systems are developed so that you can accommodate the whole build out of, the, of the, the subdivision. Because once an individual lot comes before for building, you know, there's no recourse for, for getting back um, the system. So I think the proposed watershed plan needs to be updated to include, you know, proposed uh, tree lines. Uh, for, for the buildable lots, the grading, uh, you know, that any driveways or walkways and, and obviously the houses so that the, so that the, net, <coughs> the net impact of this, uh, the project on st as, as it relates to stormwater management is, is maintained. Um, there are uh, uh, the yeah, developers pro proposing two infiltration th systems and one Detention system. Um, the Mass DEP requires that the testing actually be within the, the systems, uh, so we're asking for additional testing, and also for um, uh, it, them to be done by a, a soil evaluator that so they can locate models for develop seasonal high groundwater elevations and make sure that the the systems will function as they're proposed. The soils in this area are C uh, till till soils, not very highly draining. So I think the the system has to be uh, updated to reflect those, or 
or the applicant should provide some uh, field uh, infiltration test to verify that they're using a, a higher uh, infiltration rate. So uh, they're proposing to uh, a waiver for the lighting from the monuments. You know, obviously that's a, a board board's decision. Um, planting as well. Now, if they are proposing to have a minimum pavement width, they're proposing to have the sidewalk adjacent to the to the uh, to the roadway. So that may limit the amount of clearing they need to do. Although they have to do some grading, uh, so that so there there may be some some. Uh, need for additional trees. Uh, so I think once we once we have a plan that shows how much clearing they're actually going to do <coughs> for the development, then I think you, the board may want to consider having to, uh, consider this tree tree issue. Um, and then and then there's um, I think the the sediment and erosion control plan should be provided to to show how the you know uh, the wetlands are going to be protected uh, and then obviously an O&M plan for uh, both the um, stormwater system and uh, is, is it is it the is your understanding that the town would own the pump station too or no no they would uh, that's they would own the main that's the but the pump itself and the pump station would be owned by the homeowners association okay we also uh, our experience is that there are, there are alternatives to having a single pump station. Is is having there's there's only two houses on this low pressure line. So if they could have their each each unit have their own uh, low pressure system, then it wouldn't be dependent on on the one. Uh, so that's what we recommend them. You know, looking yep. into that. So, um, so anyway, those that's a nutshell of my comments. Yeah, the board's purview does not extend to the house that's currently there on the property that it's on. Is that, that that's that's my understanding of it. I just wanted to clarify that, right? That that's not actually part of the subdivision application that you've submitted, right? The the, in the, existing, the existing home. Yes. Well, it's 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 gonna it's on lot one. I mean, it's part of that. The, oh, the existing home is on lot yes, one. Yes, it's because we're creating frontage for, from the actual roadway itself. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, good to know. So we just, in regards to that, we ask that they provide the dimensions to show that they meet the setback requirements. Okay. All right. Thank you. Questions from the board? Sure. Want to go from this way? Has, has the... Uh, uh, the has the fire department looked at it with you narrowing the roadway on it? No, they haven't yet. Um, the uh, From the technical review that was mentioned that we should meet with them, what I want to do is get here, get some comments, get the peer review, um, so then I could then deal, you know, basically deal with all that at the same time instead of making modifications and then having people review stuff that had already been modified, stuff like that. I wanted, I was waiting for everybody to, to make their comments. So now that I have the peer review and after tonight's hearing, I'll then meet with them to get their comments before we start adjusting the, the plans. Will the, will the back three houses, will they need to be sprinkled or? Uh, for size, no. For now, because we have the hydrant and proximity. Um, there, won't, there won't be a need for it. And we have, we do have access. We did the, even with the reduced pavement, we do have the, the interior and exterior radiuses for the, for the truck movement. Um, and because of the proximity to the hydrant and the size of the homes, they, they won't need to be sprinkled. But uh, so the, tur the turnaround is still adequate. Right. Everything can meet the turn requirements. Just, you're just narrowing it down. Right. Got okay, I, I just got a, a couple of thoughts on some of the waivers. Uh, the narrower road, uh, considering it only services three homes, does seem reasonable. And the nice thing about that is that a narrower road tends to cause drivers to drive more slowly, uh, which uh, helps with the short sight distances within the subdivision. Right. Uh, so I, actually, considering the sight distances, the narrow road is positive. Uh, as to the uh, waiver for the grass strip, you know that that puts the sidewalk and the road more together. I think that's a little less safe. I, I really like, you know, when I'm walking with my son, who's six, 
uh, I really feel a lot more comfortable walking on a sidewalk that's got a, a like a two or three foot strip of okay. grass between the sidewalk and the road. Yep, fair point. Um, so I'm, I'd be inclined, uh, without good justification, to say no to okay. removing that. Um, not having street lamps, I like dark streets. So I, you're not going to hear a complaint from me on that. Uh, we'll see what the rest of the board thinks. Um, the limited monumentation, uh, is that the uh, property line markers? Right. Um, uh, the rest of the board might not know this. Uh, if you remember, um, Dave Foster was a very long time member of the planning board, and I believe he put in that rule for increased monumentation uh, specifically because property owners have found that it's often hard to figure out exactly where all the property lines are and having that monumentation is of value to the property owners going forward and when you're putting in a subdivision and you have to do all the surveying anyway it makes sense to put in the full monumentation um, and then it's a lot easier for the property owners if they ever need to survey or, or, or just informally figure out where the property lines are. So unless you've got a, a really good reason, I, I would not be inclined to grant that waiver. Okay, yeah, we were, we were looking at just doing the, the right away um, with the, you know, basically with the radius is the, the PTs and the, and the PCs and stuff, but we could do, we can do the, it all. The, yeah. the, that's the reasoning on that. And yeah, so we, I, I, would, I would need yeah. a good argument for not doing it like you have to dig up wetlands to do that or something. You know, that, that I'd understand. Yeah, there are, there are corners that are inside the wetland areas, so uh, we'd, we'd probably want to stay out of that. So, but so we if, could. You, if you want waivers for ones that are within wetlands, yep. yeah, that makes sense. You've okay. got a good reason. But for others, I, I'd say no. Okay. Um, and... Um, the, the requirement from planting street trees, um, I, we haven't really looked at the landscaping layout here. Um, my inclination is you're talking about cutting down trees for, for site view, uh, sight lines and, and whatnot. To the extent that there are good places to put in trees, I think you should. Okay. So I'm not sure um, you know, how the landscaping is going to work out, what, what trees you're preserving that are already there. Um, but just, just on the surface, I would say no, but it might be that there are plenty of good trees that you're preserving and that it, you know, that it would be redundant. Uh, so that's something we'll need some justification. Sure. And then we can, uh, now with the, sure. the recommendation for looking at like a total build out, I could take a look at how many, because right now we're showing the trees that come down just for the, the roadway work. Um, we could take a look at what we believe trees would be for individual lots I, as well. I think that's what we'd need to see yeah. and see if, see if more trees make sense at the t when the whole yep. thing is done. Um, uh, there was a mention of a waiver for sidewalk on both sides. I thought a sidewalk was only required on one side. I, I may have been mistaken. It but says to go all the way around the roadway. So, okay, I I I think in, in most developments like this, we only put a sidewalk on one side and run it to have uh, it at the driveway at the on the cul-de-sac. Three forty-four eight B. Um, can I? Um, you know, I really want to second what um, Preston said in terms of monumentation. I think we have to be crystal clear about where the property boundaries are. Just in my experience, I've seen too many feuds between developers and um, adjacent landowners in terms of something happening on somebody's property, another thing happening on another thing's property, because the parcel is not adequately delineated. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important that we have that. The other thing I think is important is that, you know, um, vegetation that offers buffering um, between what, what's going up here and the adjacent, you know, landowners. I, I think I think buffering is important. I think vegetation is important in that case. Okay. And I just want to note, I, I, miss, I guess I misspoke about the, the waiver request for the additional sidewalk. I've done many plans. This wasn't. So I okay. think your regulations only require one. Okay. okay. Still going? You got more? Uh, that's what I got for now. Can we do mine? Please. All right. So on the plan, I can't, uh, I think there needs to be a little bit more detail on the actual clearing of the lots themselves. There's been a problem with some developers in town. They go in and completely strip uh, a development of of uh, any trees whatsoever. I think you just need a little bit more of a, sometimes they'll come in with a colored plan. They'll actually show by the different colors, light green, dark green. I think that'd be, that'd be great to see. <coughs> 
there's a call for 15 inch caliper trees need to be indexed. Can we waive that? Well, we actually have them located. They've got them. This yeah. is all okay. the trees. All right. Yeah. Okay. I haven't waived it yet. Nope. <laughs> so um, that's the first thing. There's a tricky little development. Yes. Like, uh, people really going to some extent to put three houses in. I was looking at this going, what in the world are you trying to do here? Um, so that's probably tough for uh, the numbers, but that's not ultimately my issue. <laughs> um, the so I'm looking at this going, all right. Well, you get it's difficult to begin with. Again, that's an engineering thing and a, I guess, an investor decision thing. The, the water shutdown thing is a little annoying to, to residents. I, I don't personally like that. I I get it, um, and I guess it, that if you're looking at it as an improvement long term by having the additional valves, that it's probably your position. Um, I also agree with the town uh, street standard for the street itself, and whether that becomes whether that's going to make any difference to 20 feet versus 26 feet. I probably lean to the side of creating less water that you're going to have to deal with, so the narrower road, if possible. Um, the monumentation, I think I feel the same way about that. I also, was the first thing I checked was the street lamps. I wouldn't, I don't think the neighbors are going to want to see lights in the woods <laughs> on some right. random schedule. So I'd, I'd be of the mind to grant that waiver. Um, the open space park requirement, that, that doesn't seem like it's going to make a lot of sense on a development of the size, kind of onerous. But my, my big concern here is uh, safety. I mean, this, to me personally, I have a serious concern about this being dangerous, you know, just outright dangerous. <laughs> and I've driven past it a bunch of times when it, when it came up for the, uh, the uh, preliminary. And so I tried to kind of look at this and, and be you know, fair about the whole thing. But um, where I'm coming up with, ultimately, I think more work in whether that's going to be on our side, peer review, or your side, just has to confirm that that works. And at which speed, I don't know where that's going to result in. You can go up to 50 miles an hour. That's going to probably be a whole argument itself as to how, why people are even going that fast down the street. But um, my thought is, if it, if it let's say it is the 80% standard, um, then and that comes out at 34 miles an hour, or 36 miles an hour, and it needs to be go needs to go this far. I just want to confirm that that actually is going as far as it's supposed to. So I really hope our peer review can look into the actual numbers there. Uh, first of all, so the line of sight was one major concern of mine. The second one is based on these. These are, I know we're looking at a scale, and this is 10 right. wider as opposed to than it really is, but that's still pretty steep. Yeah. You know, so ice and snow, I guess that's going to be an issue there. And he probably looked at the standard as to whether that's even possible. You'll prove through the sight lines and the, and, and, and the actual rounding as to whether that's even feasible. Um, the but so that's going to be let's call that slope sight distance. I don't know what the actual uh, technical term is, but um, the other thing I was going to say is if you're going to do that and you're going to do the clearing plan anyways, I think one area that you do need to clear and clearly define on this plan is the outlet slash inlet on Olive Street. Yep. For instance, what you don't want to do, I think, I, I personally, I'd like to see much more definition as to where things are going to get cleared out there. You're going to be going for uh, a permit anyways um, for Scenic Road, and if you need to do a little bit of clearing at that entrance, what you want to prevent is that cars have to come out three feet just to see because that's going to completely aggravate how dangerous this gets. It happens all the time uh, when the bushes grow up on, say, Elliott and Chestnut. When we were doing a 466 Chestnut, it was the same thing. They actually, um, I think they, they offered mitigation funds in that area so that the town can do it, but obviously this is something that should probably be controlled internally, not pushed on the town in that particular case. But um, I think some of that clearing does need to take place right at the opening and then be very sensitive to how that is buffered just behind that so that you don't have to see into this development. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Is that what I'm yes. saying? Um, and does any other items? Uh, I couldn't quite follow where, where, where's the detention basin? Is it the very back? It's, it's in this section here. It's actually smaller than the detention basin. Okay, and so, and then I think you probably do want to, personally, I don't like waiving a requirement to uh, buffer that. You're, you're going to leave kind of a, and I, the one I always think of is the one in front of Sears Plaza. <laughs> I guess that doesn't have a fence on it, right? But yeah, I, I worry about the safety of those, too. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want a, a kid sort of falling into that. Yeah, it's, the elevation, it's, a two, it's two feet deep. Oh, well, it's two feet. feet. Okay. So some of them get very deep. Right, some, yeah, without a doubt. Some of them can be yeah. 10, 15 yeah. feet. Yeah. So I just, you know. Right. So is it naturally buffered? Is it naturally going to be? So uh, as... Within the easement, there's, there's, there's not. What we have is we're keeping the trees along this edge here, which okay. are these aren't. These are just the, the large trees. We're not the underbrush that's in there yeah. as well. 
which is the, you know, the 15 inch, the 20 inch, 18, 20, okay. 16 foot. This whole section is there, whatever. The section where the, the tension basin is, it's within, it's about 11 feet off the, the street, so we can't really put a tree right there because that's right in the middle of our sight distance right there. And another, um, if it gets to the point where this goes somewhere, I would say the same thing for as far as conditions. Um, nothing at the mouth of the development as far as storage, of, storing of, of goods or aggregate or anything they're going to need in the excavation yep. process. I keep saying we, we've been pretty good about putting that in a lot of the subdivision plans. And I was driving to another town recently, and they had it just what I thought it was just huge piles of. Actually, it was right over the as you go to Holliston, first first development on the left. He's storing everything right in the front. I'm like, these people are going to be looking at construction debris until he sells that entire development out, which could be years. Yep. And this is small and this is fast, but. And, then, and that wraps all the way around. They cut yeah. off, they dead end, and then they have like a ton of space and put it right there, yeah. So maybe that goes through uh, people that are going to be on the board for a long time. Um, I think we do a good job of requiring people not to use the front as the staging area, because that to me is the big impact on the neighbors oftentimes, uh, to push that into the back the, right. minute you, the minute you can, you know. Yep. So that was, I think, mine. Obviously, again, main, main thing for me, big safety concerns or I think we just got to do some serious due diligence on that so thanks <clears throat> so I, I think most of my focus these are, these are some tough buildable lots certainly and the, the slope makes me nervous in the intersection to Olive Street um, do you know what the width of Olive Street is currently it, it varies so um, in that how about in that area though sure 22, 23 feet. it's a pretty thin street do we, is it considered a, a minor or a collector road? That's a good question. Um, so I think that kind of dictates some of the let me see. subdivision bylaws based on what type of road well, it is. Well, let's see what we got. Give me a sec. Yeah. If you want to go on to something else, I'll get back well, to you. That dictates what it should be if, if they were building it. But it's pre-existing, so it's... Right, but I think it changes the line of sight requirements entering onto the street. I, I could be I could be misreading. Or, 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 no, it's just one side. Is it the side line off? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. The, 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 we, the, the, only, the minimum center line radii of curved streets shall not be less than the following: a lane is a hundred feet. Minor Street is 150 feet. Collector Street is 500 feet. It's radii, isn't it? That, and that's just radii. That's really yeah. where this talks about those types of streets in the subdivision regulations. Right. Um, as far as curbing, are you guys proposing curbing within the subdivision? We do have, we're proposing some asphalt curbs. Yeah. Asphalt curbs. So you've removed the granite curbing. Um, I don't, I didn't, was there a waiver in for that? Or? Yes. There is. I can do that one. Um, you know, with, with the runoff and, and the water and the soil type there, I don't know if that's going to be preferred or not. So um. that, That's one of those things where if we're going to be a town street, we would probably not waive that. And so if we're saying we should build it to town standards, we wouldn't waive that. I, I tend to agree. But, and, and while it makes it more expensive, you know, since the residents are maintaining that, and then the residents are going to have to pay for repairing it when the snow plows dig into the asphalt, um, you know, it, it's also potentially in the interest of the future residents. Yeah. Um, running down the list of waivers, I think I agree mostly with everything kind of Preston outlined as far as, uh, you know, be willing to waive uh, certainly the... The open space park requirement doesn't seem to apply here. Um, the street lamp requirement probably doesn't, uh, isn't warranted here. I, I, I'm not so inclined to waive the, the plantings. I think um, being in a, a scenic road, we do want to try and maintain that characteristic on this road. Um, same with the, uh, the grass strip. Now, is there any other existing sidewalk, though, along Olive Street? No, there is not. not. So I don't know what type of mitigation is going to be built in to connect to additional sidewalks or, or what we're going to kind of do down there. Um, but that's probably something we want to look at because we certainly just don't want, you know, 100 feet of sidewalk in right. front of your one subdevelopment. Um, I think 
again, if we ever have to accept the road, I would say that the waiver on the pipe diameter is probably not a good idea. And I'm uh, I'm un indifferent on the monumentation. If, if if you guys recommend we keep that because of private our previous issues, then I would say we'd probably want to. I feel pretty strong to keep that. One. Yep. So let's let's go in that way. Um, the road width seems to make sense to be able to to decrease it, considering the amount of houses and, and decrease the footstep or footprint. Yeah. Um, yeah. The vegetation for the abutters. I don't know. I know it's pretty. I think it's thick in there now in the backside. I don't know if, how much clear cutting you do, but that's something I'd want to see as well to kind of see what what opens up back there, yep. and to see what would be required. Um, curbing. How far back um, is each house off of the proposed cul-de-sac? Um, just just rough estimates, fine. Just so I know how far they're going to sit back off of. Yeah, so that's about 50 feet off. Typically 45 to 50 feet off. Okay. So if we were to adopt the, the road, it would certainly meet all our setback requirements of right away as well. Yep. Um, right, those are my uh, questions right now that I kind of jotted down that you guys didn't cover. Um, mitigating the traffic concerns, we'll talk more about that, I think, as as we kind of review this. What I do want to do is, there's some people here. Can I just say do one more? Yep. I just want to say that um, just in line with those traffic concerns is the safety of pedestrians who are navigating this road, high yep. speed road. And so maybe at the next meeting we begin to think about potential solutions or ideas for that. Okay. 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 The, other, um, the other question I had, and this might be for you, Nat, is I know there's, um, some proposed improvements to Olive Street tied, I thought, to the RTD. Is there some, some? I can look into that. I thought it was a traffic study that. I thought there was some incorporated, or if, if anything, it was only the intersection with. Uh, I think it is primarily around. The, it, that's what I think it is. I think it's primarily focused on the intersection around 135, but I think it was maybe being paired with discussions of potentially either widening the street or bringing it up to a, a safer. I'll find out. Yeah, if we can find out what, um, you know, the DPW group is looking at and what other plans have been approved that may yep. be able to link into this and, and provide uh, maybe associated mitigation to help make both projects happen. Yep. Sure. It's public. Yeah, if, if there's... Um plan to put a sidewalk in along Olive Street uh, that could be incorporated for the the at least the lot one frontage as part of this if, if DPW says that's part of the, the mm -hmm. plan to incorporate that yeah definitely okay. um, the board didn't have any immediate questions did you have yep well, just one thing that I, I think we were split right down the middle on is John, I, I, I'm getting confused who's who now. But the island, oh. so you got an island at yeah, called a that. sack there. Yep. And I know you said you're going to put a pump station there, but if you go to individual pumps for the houses, like an E1 system, so right. you don't need to put a pump station there, then would you consider just paving that whole area? Um, we could do that. I'm a, we could add, and I know the idea is even if we didn't pave it, to keep it grass so then snow can be pushed into it for, for, for storage and stuff. I know we don't want to make it a vegetation area, um, lawn, or we could, we could make it a pervious pavers in the middle or something like that so it's, we're not increasing the, the runoff from that area. I, we've got some crazy people who like big asphalt. Cars. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I just look and, at where Baron is playing, and when he's, he's out there, when he's out there, you know, He's out there playing street hockey and, and dribbling around his basketball. And, you know, he's only got a 20-foot wide section, so he can't even get in full passes. And <laughs> Preston, he's not a sports guy, so, you know. <laughs> Downhill skin. No, I, 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 I see that. <laughs> you won't be like playing it. street hockey. There's yeah. good arguments Speed from stuff. both sides there. Yeah, I just keep jumping. Um, well, you ain't got to worry about a, you know, run-down basketball hoop because no one will put one up at the end of that thing. <laughs> All right. There you go. Right. Um, so I, 
like I said, there are some residents in the in the crowd, so I'd like to hear what they have to say. Um, obviously, this is the, the first meeting of probably a few, so we'll open it up to them quickly to share some comments. If you can just come to the microphone. And State your name and, and address, please. Hi, Ruth Hanning, 65 Olive Street. Um, I wanted to thank the board, first of all, for um, recognizing and expressing the concerns about the speed of the traffic on Olive Street um, and what a huge concern um, that is for us and specifically how it would impact us in terms of um, where the proposed road comes into Olive Street. Um, so one question that I have here, I'm not sure it's really clear from this that there's a curve in Olive Street. Um, so I'm sorry, I don't understand all the technology that you used, but the technical wording that you used. Um, but in terms of line of sight, if you're a if you're a vehicle or if you're a pedestrian, the road curves from 70 to 78. So you really have maybe 20 feet of visibility if you're walking or driving on that road. Um, so, you know, we just really have to kind of think about the visibility here and um, if possible widening the road. I mean, I realize that's not under the purview of the planning board, but I do think that we need to kind of think about bigger picture of Olive Street um, if this um, proposed road does come in. Um, Nat had also suggested that I speak with um, David Mnugian, um when I had talked to Nat earlier. Um, and he, I had spoken with him, um, David Mnugian, and he had said that in the early part of this process um, that there was a conversation with um, several different entities um, and the developer and the idea of a sidewalk from um, the proposed road on Olive Street down to Maury um, was discussed. Um, and that was encouraged that the developer um, think about subsidizing part of that. Um, so I would ask that that be revisited. Um, I also wonder, I don't know what the protocol is, um, but if the developer is able to subsidize other infrastructure changes or some of the infrastructure changes, if possible, a flashing yellow there, if possible, widening of the road. Um, it's just a very dangerous area. Thanks. Thank you. Excuse me. My name is Eugene Lifshit, 78 Olive Street, and I'm probably in the most attractive point of this plan because I live right here, and my both my bedroom exactly in 25, 30 feet from the road. So all traffic will be, it's not a big traffic, I understand it, just three houses, four houses, but it will be lighting exactly in my, it's, it's not correct actually, because m my house more close to the center of Suggestion Street. It's first, second one, when it was measurement of the visibility, I am witness. One of the uh, measurer stand on a driveway of Mr. Underwood. It's right here. Second one stand right here on my property, not on a not not on uh, not on a road itself, and it's it's totally different picture with visibility from here to here, comparing with center of the road, both because Root who told. It's exactly shape right here between my two properties. It's huge rock. It's, it's close visibility from here and from here. So to say 100 to 200 yards from here and from here, it's, I apologize, it's not true. You could be my witness, witnesses to, to check it on, on the board. So I really appreciate uh, to Mr. Preston because you're afraid to walk with your six-year son. Trust me, I am doing it every day, and I'm afraid because I have no line between me and between cars. If somebody tell you uh, speed 
30 miles per hour, it's not true. They're going uphill maybe 35 and downhill even more, 40 or even more. It's, it's not true about 25, it's not true about 30 miles. So I don't know, uh, I'm not talking about upcoming two years of construction. It will be just, just in my bedroom, but uh, after that it will be, I don't expect anything better than right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for thinking about uh, sidewalks for our street. Mm -hmm. It's really what I did. Kevin Underwood, 85 Olive Street. Um, in the situation with the retaining wall that will be built along the side of the hill to keep my property from sliding down into the street, who actually has to maintain that over time? Is that who ends up getting the deed for parcel A at this point? I mean, we can tell you what we think, but they might have a response back there. I would think it would be the HOA. Is that what you guys are proposing? Okay. Okay. And if you deed that to the uh, lot one property, how does the HOA work then? So it's in the as the, uh, the drainage systems, even though they're on individual property, the HOA would HOA be in charge of it. So, so the maintenance and, and uh, cost of repair it would be would be handled by the HOA. And is the HOA built into this subdevelopment plan, which is before the board, or is that something that comes later? We're going to propose that. So the further we get down the road, we're going to put, we have, we'll start putting HOA documents together to, to for the uh, the town. Um, so it it, yeah. it 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 could potentially be conditioned in the certificate of approval. That is the contract that's going to be the culmination of this process. You could condition HOA language in there, so that 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 we could do. Okay, okay, it's a possibility. You're talking about the one in the back, right? It's abutting uh, NF. Capadona Trust, NF, GNL Enterprise, LLC? No, I'm talking about the proposed retaining wall, which is actually paralleling my property line to the subparcel A property line. It starts about halfway subparcel A and then continues back on to okay. lot four. Okay. Um, because that, that's the steep part of the hill and the terrain in that area. Um, as, as as the elevation dictates and shows you there, yeah. so that's I, that's kind of a concern. I don't want to have to worry about erosion issues due to somebody not maintaining a retaining wall in the future. Um, as far as I'd like to make some comments about the stormwater, um, I really would consider going with um, the porous pavers, and potentially if if the if the plans allow for even a dry well situation in that kind of case. The more volume you have at the bottom of that cul-de-sac for stormwater will pr potentially prevent flooding with the houses that are going to be down there. Because I've seen the storms come. I know how much rain goes down through the, my driveway area. I know that's heading towards the street and away from this area, but I, the elevation going the other direction is heading right down into this development area. So if we're going to put houses back here, we better be prepared to have some good stormwater management on that. Um, as far as the generator going in the middle of that island, if that maybe that won't happen that way, but are there sound standards for that when it's running? I know it's an emergency situation when power's out, that type of thing, but it's going to affect every all the neighbors associated with that. I would encourage you to get in touch with our health agent, Mark Oram. Okay. Noise is his purview. Excellent. Um, now, as far as the traffic aspect, um, I have lived there since 2002. I've had the pleasure of seeing people almost get run over at the end of my driveway more than once. Um, I did actually have uh, a young neighbor's nephew get hit on a bicycle at the end of my driveway. If people fly down that hill. The, the, the coming from, ha from Hoppington down that way, there was a very large gradient difference on this street, which is why we get probably in the order of close to at least 40 miles an hour and maybe 45 at times. If people don't know this street and they happen to be a, a low uh, brake person and not using it down the hill, you can get 10 or 15 miles additional speed coming down that hill if you're not paying attention. Um, so it's a very big concern. I noticed on the traffic study that TEC did, um, they're assuming a 26-foot subdivision roadway. 
So I assume we're going to ask that to be reviewed with the 20 foot roadway um, because that's going to make a difference on sight lines. Thank you very much. TEC was a, tra a peer reviewer that we used for a traffic study for the preliminary okay. submittal. Are we going to have another traffic study done with a 20, assuming a 20 foot, ro foot roadway then? That's up to the, that's up to the board. So, yeah, I don't know if it needs a whole traffic study, but I, I have concerns about the line of sight in general. Right. I'm well, not sure I completely that, trust the current measurements, which we would use a 20 foot. Um, I, I believe the current measurements went from the center line of the 26 foot wide proposed road. So I at, believe that's correct at also. 20 feet, it should be the same center line same in theory. In theory, um, yes. So, but yeah, I think, you know, we would write 20 feet in whatever, if we had another peer review look at this distance. But you would also expect that with a 20 foot roadway, the radiuses coming from all of onto that street would be narrower. Right, so you would have less sight opportunity if there's anything at the end of those, at the end of that street. True. Yep. So I don't think it's. I, in my opinion, that part of it's not better, and it can make. I think it's worse. Thank you. Any additional questions? Thing from the board? How high is that retaining wall going to be in between Mr. Underwood's property and the road day? It's about, about three feet tall. And it, this is it. This is the mm -hmm. section right there. So the, the walls I think you were looking at are the, is the, uh, the historical, the, the wall, the stone yeah, walls? Yeah, I figured that out. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is, how's that wall made? What, what this wall here? Material, the, yeah. yeah. It's a, we're going to use it. It'll be either a, a port in place wall or a uh, um, like a uni block type of wall because mm. it's only three feet tall. So mm -hmm. we don't we don't plan on we don't plan on doing like a field stone wall because we want to make it a real structural wall. All right. So Nat, do you need anything from the applicant for next steps? Um, before we pick a, a date to convene again when we have a chance to review the plans and the, and the peer review notes in greater detail? Yeah, I guess as I said before, I want to see ideas for addressing auto and pedestrian safety because, you know, I think the board's looking to explore that and I think we need to have um, some, pardon the ridiculous pun, some concrete things to, to take a look at. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right. Makes sense. I, I am interested in having a, another, uh, just a line of sight study done. I'm very familiar with the road, so I, I don't know where we go from there to do that. If um, if the applicant wants to find an independent reviewer, or, or are you are you capable of conducting such a study? Okay, um, and we'll, we'll do it at 20 feet with uh, with the new radius measurements and. Um, the proposed well, typically, clearing. Typically, for a subdivision mode, you would be ten feet back from the edge of pavement. Right. So, okay. so the car is, is stopped. It's stopped. Right? And not within the existing travel yep. of the road, and he's got to be able to see both ways. Both ways. So I, 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 I know I took some pictures. I, I should have brought. Up, but I took some pictures where I believe the car would be, and it was especially on the uh, the, the uphill side, because because that. Not, you have a number of things. You get the the banking, and then it, the the road makes a a, a curve back yeah, too. Okay. So people are coming around, and, and no idea. I don't. I don't. You know, we didn't measure it, but I I did take. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Those lines, right? Okay. They were looking for to investigate. Yeah. So, yeah. So and I can I want to because you don't have copies of these. So the I want to forward these PDFs to to Nat. So I'm if you can forward them to you, the um. And that's what we have. I'm like, we're, we're set to be, t where this location right here is 10 feet off the pavement uh, where the driver will be sitting. And then he's looking, they're looking in, in the, the two different directions. And then basically, I'll, I can send you the profile too, just the, the elevation differences. So if you could conduct that before the next meeting so that we could review it, that would be good. Is, is there any 
Good question, Tim. Difference for the line of sight of the, the drivers as opposed to the person stopped at that intersection that should be considered in this instance, meaning the, the approaching vehicles or, right, so, so we have how far a resident of this new cul-de-sac can see right and left. Um, is that identical to somebody coming around that turn based on the slope coming into that, that bend? Okay. Ideally, that's, that's what it's supposed to be because you have the driver's eyes at three and a half feet on both sides. So they should be able to see each other through that area. So that, so this, this car should be able to see to that car and that should be able to see back. I think, I think he's got to see six inches, something six inches, six inches off the ground. That's for stop and sight distance, yeah. And a second sight distance is three and a half, three and a half for the. Okay. That would be, that would be the key for the people to be able to stop for someone's in the road. And that's what we have here on the same plan is the stopping sight distance. But we can, as we had mentioned, as we had mentioned, um, we can generate that even further to make sure, like to get the, what's the furthest extent we can get. Oh, but you're going to study it as well, the because um, we would have shown it based on that original peer review by TEC. Okay. Um. So I, I think line of sight and safety on that Olive Street seems to be across the board, right? Something we're concerned about, and we have to look at yep, how we're going to oh, yeah. get over some of that. Yep. Um, I think drainage is another right thing that we're we're kind of stuck on here, and, um, and and that's primarily due to the grade, right? So it's a really tough kind of grade to be working in. Is there anything else that you really wanted them to focus on? Um, Just the waiver pieces that you're going to see with and, and then the waivers, kind of incorporating them and showing everything on the uh, on the plans. Okay. I'm assuming they're probably responding to this whole period too. Right. right yeah, we, we received it today. So. Sounds like there's a fair amount of work here. I, I'm not sure if two weeks is reasonable or not for the next uh, discussion on this. I, I don't know what the schedule should be. Even it, it, it wouldn't def, it wouldn't allow them to even if we submitted stuff to them, it wouldn't give them time to, to review yeah. our stuff. So, so do you want to go to June? You want to go to the first meeting in June? I'm comfortable with that. How do we? So that's how do we currently look. My uh, so. I can I can schedule soil testing. I just do dig safe, so I could do it sometime next week. So we're looking at. Um, I could let you know if you want to. June nice. it, Have somebody send it come out with us. Thursday, June ninth. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. So we'll, uh, so we'll continue to uh, June 9th. Okay. And uh, I don't know if we have anything on June 9th, but we make it for seven fifteen. And as long as we do that vote, we're good to go. Adjust accordingly. Yep. What, what vote are you talking about? Got a vote. Uh, got a vote on June 9th. Oh, I I, I move to continue this to June 9th at 7:15. So moved. Uh, for a second. Oh yeah, second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tired. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks. I'm trying, I'm trying to get Vanessa's name in there one more time. Oh. One more time. <laughs> Good job, Vanessa. We disappointed you to another year. Yeah. I Actually, no, you still got two more years left. Okay, I'm so you could do that if you want to. Since you resigned one, you could get appointed for one year. All right, so, so before we close this thing, there's a little bit more cake here, if you want it. No, that's Mike's piece right there, the oh, whole thing. This, the whole right. thing. He was, just wait, he was waiting to get for, He was waiting to get anybody in the, 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 the want to throw it into somebody's face. That's another option. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I want to say I want to say a couple of things because this is kind of a bittersweet meeting. Can we keep it down a little bit? Meeting still up. Excuse me, we're still conducting the meeting. Can you the keep it? still in progress. Quiet? This is this is kind of a this is kind of a bittersweet meeting because this is um, Vanessa's last meeting, and this is John's last meeting. Um, and. Um, so I want to I want to say a couple things. I, I, first thing I want to talk about um, is a particular meeting that we had a couple months ago, when we had a line of folks up there, one after the other. They were pretty angry, and they were sort of taking it out on the board, and they were sort of taking it out on me. And about four hours of that, 
you really, you know, you may, we all think we're here in a professional capacity, but, but that amount of, of anger being thrown at you, you know, at the end of the meeting, you know, personally, you, you begin to feel it. It's kind of, it's kind of stressful. And um, the next day, Vanessa called me, and she wanted to know how I was doing. You know, not like, oh, how are you doing today? But how, how was I really doing after four hours of a line of people yelling at me? And, <laughs> and I really appreciated that. I really appreciated that because, you know, that, that's something that happens from time to time. And it was really nice to, to just have somebody just check in and, 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 and see that. So, you know, so I really want to thank you for that. And I think that you brought a sense of, of compassion to the board that, that, that was very, very, that was very nice. So I just, I just want to put that out there. And um, John, since, I've, since I started here about three years ago, um, first time I saw John was at the community center. He was sitting forward, so I didn't, I, I, I didn't see him directly in the face. But when he turned around, smiled, enthusiastic, came right at me. And I just want to say a couple of things. In the three years that I've worked with John, he hasn't gotten angry once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not once. He hasn't, he hasn't gotten annoyed once. He has remained incredibly positive and enthusiastic. And that's, that's an incredible characteristic when you're, when you're working with somebody. Somebody who can really keep all of those things at bay that takes a remarkable sense of uh, restraint, and I'm incredibly appreciative of that. Um, and another thing about John is that um, even when it comes to minutes, after you have a conversation with him, he has a remarkable ability to make you feel happy and enthusiastic, even about the most mundane things. If I have to do minutes, after talking to him, I feel really happy and enthusiastic <laughs> about doing those minutes. Or even if I have to go out and do a site visit, you know, of, you know, of a, the, most, the ugliest piece of pavement you've ever seen, I feel excited, enthusiastic about doing that because of, of him. And, you know, so, so that, that's another thing I want to say. And the final thing I want to say is that um, John has a very systematic approach in terms of how he addresses things. And, you know, I, I, I tried to learn a lot from that um, because this is, this is a process that's filled with a lot of um, emotion and um, it gets heated up and charged very, very quickly. And so to be able to um, have a system to stick to, I think is a very, very good thing. So that's, that's another thing I learned from John. So I, I just want to say that. I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm sad to see you guys go. I know you have other things that you have to do, so I understand. But, um, so I, I brought, you know, I wish, all, I wish you guys all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So I'd like to just make a comment as well. No roses. <laughs> no, no, no roses. But I, I will say I, I can agree with that. I've never seen John angry, but I, I've certainly seen him annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's great. He's <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've learned to respect anybody that donates their time and energy to the town to make the town a better place. It's certainly um, it's not easy. We're here in a, in a volunteer capacity, um, and you you tend to sometimes give up a, a lot of things to, to be able to put the, the needed time in to do these things. Um, so, so thank you both for putting yourselves out there and subjecting yourselves to, um, you know, just to everything we're subjected to, <laughs> whether it be people's opinions or whether it be tough decisions or whether it just be uh, the time commitment that it takes to, to really do this appropriately. Um, I, you, you hinted on it, but I really, I feel like our time's getting cut short. I, I like the dynamic of the board right now, and I really think we have um, five unique and distinctive personalities on this board, which is, which is a really good thing, right? Uh, we, we certainly don't have a lot of group think that always goes on here, and we, we all bring uh, a, a different skill set to the board and a, and a different... It functions well. A different approach to how we deal with developers and residents and and decisions that really impact our town. So that, that saddens me yeah. that we're gonna, yeah. you know, yeah. lose that. But, um, you know, I, I wish you guys the best. Hopefully, uh, if time frees up and you have time to come back on, on board, <laughs> either one of you, there's always, uh, always room here on the planning board. <laughs> and uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. I, uh, John, thank you for showing me, I guess, how to be 
be the chair for a year because you were chair both years I uh, I did this prior so if anybody has any concerns they can blame John now that he's, <laughs> now that he's gone <laughs> for it. and, uh, <laughs> and uh, no so I, I appreciate it thank you guys thank you both for your uh, your dedication to the town Welcome. thank you yeah thank you I'll miss you both yeah see each other in town We'll be doing good if we can uh, if we can get replacements that are half of what you guys are. So That's right. <laughs> fingers crossed that uh, you know, and hate to see both you guys go. And yeah, I've learned a lot from both you guys and, and being on here with you. And the amount of time, like Mike said, is it's a lot. You know, it's, like it's a lot. Two two meetings a two meetings a month. Then you got to read and you know and do all the other stuff and drive around and yeah. So you know, um, yeah. But, Thanks for being on here and uh, showing show me a lot on this board, that's for sure. So, sad to see you guys go. Let me see, can I say one thing? Uh, I'm going to do a little round up. You guys always get everybody in the way. I want to do something for you. So, I'll, I'll do a couple of new people. So, Karen's obviously the newest. <laughs> you know, so, I'll, I'll, I'll say just, I was thinking, I was like, if I had to, you know, I try to look at my life in a certain experiences where I say, because um, when you're volunteering for stuff, you got to, in general, have to, question your motives all the time and then you, and you look at it and you say, <laughs> you say what, why am I doing this is usually the question. And then and later on you say, okay, what did I learn? You know, I'll try, I was trying to think of what if I had to pick one of the biggest things I got from each person. Um, it, 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 as Karen's coming in, she, she's diligent and, and she's doing something that often isn't seen. It's kind of funny because sometimes we're like, and Karen was involved now, even though Karen's doing a lot of everything because <laughs> Nat's got a big role now. He's got to do a bunch of different things. So it was great to see you uh, not need to be named in something and be happy that it's getting done. <laughs> right? it's staying calm because you can see her face. Like, here's what I did. She's like, <laughs> stay calm. So with, with Nat, of course, I said probably one of the biggest things I'll take um, from working with Nat is, uh, you probably don't realize you do this, you're, you're very articulate in your delivery. And you probably don't, you know, I don't know if you think about it. He prepares a lot. He worries a ton. <laughs> That's true. He really wants, you know, things to go well for people. And he gets calls all the time for people that want something from him. And they're constantly working on him, trying to manipulate him even from, from all different sides. And he has to keep an even keel, you know, serve the town and articulate exactly it is what needs to happen, particularly in hostile environments. <laughs> right? So with, with Mike, I say one of, one of my biggest takeaways with him is when I first met him, he was... Uh, He's an engineer by trade, as I've got another type of engineer next to me on both sides. So I'm like sandwiched by engineers, you know, and I'm, I'm like, I used to think like, how can I work with these people? Because <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more of like a sales and marketing guy and an entrepreneur. And, and I'm like, oh my goodness, we're never going to get through these meetings, you know. But, but underneath it, he, he really cares for the town and he really wants to make sure he does a good job. And he's very thorough. So that, that's, we have like these different skill sets. And I'm like, you know, I actually do appreciate and respect this guy. He, he's not doing it to be a pain. He's doing it because he really does care about all the details. And he does the homework. He'll spend the multiple hours. He gets particularly frustrated if like something comes to him last minute because he's like, I really actually want to read this. You know, some people on the board don't even look through stuff. <laughs> so, and, and I think hope people realize that he's not doing it for his own like edification. He's doing it for the town. Mm -hmm. You know, and he wants things to be very well. So for, for, for Preston on the other side, I say one of my f biggest takeaways from you is uh, he, he's like fearless at town meeting, man. He'll just get up, you know what I'm saying? He'll go right to the mic, fresh to the first one. I'm like, I don't want to talk in front of these people are angry, you know? <laughs> and he'll just jump right up. Here's the reason we did something that you all hate. And here's why, <laughs> you know, here's what I think about it. You know, he doesn't even care, you know, which is nice. Cause he, and that takes, that's experience. It takes a while to kind of come to a place where you formulated an opinion and you're mature enough to go, this is the way it's going to be. You can love me, you can hate me, but this is what I believe is best, and here's why. And so that's, I definitely take that from, from Preston. And, uh, and he's got a really cool car that's electric, and you can plug it in. So that's what I <laughs> <laughs> Max definitely he doesn't mind the long meetings. That's why <laughs> you got fully it. charged. Uh, Ma Max has a similar, similar joy to me. Like, we enjoy everything we're doing all the time, and we just kind of soak stuff up, and, and we live in the, the experience in the moment. And definitely uh, with Max, my biggest takeaway uh, on a board with Max is he's got, he found his voice like real quick, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you jump Freddie, you know what I think, you know, he'll go like right at it with the, with the, with the development <laughs> or something like that. And I, it took me like a year before I was even saying anything. <laughs> Everyone takes a year. Yeah, about a year. Except Max. Not Max, like first meeting. Uh, uh, probably not a good thing. Yeah. That was great. Oh, that was a good okay. Thing. Yep. Yep. And, and Vanessa, um, I would say my biggest takeaway from working with her is her heart. I think you pointed out the same thing. Like she really... Uh, feels compassion a lot of times, and it was probably even tough for her oftentimes to be stuck in these almost uh, battles because she really feels for a lot of the residents that 
even though some people, they come in, typically they don't understand a lot of the laws and the rules behind this, but they're just, and oftentimes they have, there's nothing you can do in certain cases, but she really does care and she really wants to do something and, and help the people. And, and I, you, you know, I'd see you like kind of gushing, like, I want to do something. <laughs> and she, and, and so I, and then of course, uh, you know, just her sort of diligence trying to get here from Cambridge at night and make the meetings was yep. just somewhat yep. painful and she kind of endured for so long, you know. And that's, you know, some people I think, I think she kind of feels in some sense like she let, let, let the board down in some case, but most of these other groups are doing three years. Like this is unique, doing five years is a long time. I was saying, as, my, as I was leaving my house tonight, my wife's like, Matthew was two and a half years old when you started this, my youngest son. Wow. He's almost eight, you know, wow. he's seven years. So I'm going, like, I remember he's a toddler. Yeah. And these are like, and that's five years is a long time when you see your kids because it's like, boom, you know, think about how old your son's going to be when you. So, I want a two year term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait exactly a second. He's, gonna be. he's like, he's like <laughs> we're going to re reappoint him right now. No. <laughs> so I just, I want to say I really enjoyed serving you guys. This was definitely uh, a great experience, and I really encourage other people that um, want to develop as a person, develop as a professional. Uh, there's something about serving on these boards that you're definitely doing a charity piece, but there's also a lot of personal development, and you have. And you really do, you stop, you, you can't overly concern yourself with pleasing people. You can't overly concern yourself. You're never going to make everybody happy. And you have to just arrive at a place where you've done your homework. And, and I think it makes you kind of stronger. And, and you, can, you can serve in hopefully other boards in the future or, or maybe a nonprofits and that type of thing. So I really appreciate the opportunity in the town, you know, for giving me the opportunity to do this. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Nice, All right. Go Ashley. Thank you. Nicely done. All right, my friend, take it away. You want to? I think it don't be appropriate if we had a oh, okay. motion just, here. Can I, just, can I just say really quickly? Uh, absolutely. I, I know everybody wants to leave, but um, <laughs> really quickly, um, I'm not much of a talker. Um, even though I am in communications, uh, one of the reasons why I didn't really speak was both uh, Preston and... Um, Mike, yeah, John. <laughs> were a lot more um, vocal than I was and passionate about the issues. So for me, it seemed that adding on, even when I, when I, when I agreed, it just, to me, would have come across as noise. But when I felt the need to speak, I did speak. Um, this was not necessarily something that I naturally gravitated to, um, the planning board. It was something that kind of... A, um, <laughs> I was guided towards, and I'm very happy for the, the brief opportunity to, to serve the town. And um, Preston, from you, I have always been secretly astounded as to your unusual capacity to grasp the most minute nuances of, 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 of law and, 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 and specifications. And I've always really secretly admired that. And I always say to him, like, how does he remember that nonsense? Like, I don't even get what half that stuff is, <laughs> which is why I would have to call Nat after the meeting, like the next day. I was like, so what does this mean? Where do we go? And, and I have to look in like a thousand books. <laughs> and like then the, there's that. Like the, like the thing that Preston knows right in his head. And yeah. thank you so much for not, for always, you know, taking my questions as though they were legitimate questions and not dismissing me or anything. I really, really appreciated that. And Max, I mean, I keep calling you Max. Mike, <laughs> you and I, we had that runoff. And I remember sitting next to you um, after our candidate debate. And I said to you, you know, at one point, don't be surprised. We're probably going to serve at the same time on the same board. It's interesting that we were at the same company at one point, but we never ran into the same yeah. circles. And I feel like we're kind of chasing each other. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm really happy to have actually served with you, even though we did ran, run against each other. And it does speak volumes about your, your, your character as a, as a human being for, not, for running a very diplomatic campaign. I really appreciated that. I don't think I ever had a chance to tell you. I just love you. <laughs> You're really awesome, super dude, you know, just kind of straight up. I just, I just love it. It's just really, really unique. And um, Karen, Karen's awesome. But just to reiterate, it's a very unique board, fantastic, different um, personalities. And even though I've been sidelined by some health issues within the last few months, I really did appreciate the opportunity to serve this town. And um, I'm going to miss you guys. I'm not going to miss the cantankerous nature of how some of these things can go, but I am going to miss you guys. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. I think that's the most I've said in the couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> you, so. you want us to make a motion to close the meeting? Yeah. yeah. Motion to adjourn. It's now 9.35. I second.
All in favor? Aye. 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 All right.